Imagine you are a senior getting ready to graduate and you fail a big midterm. Would you feel afraid? Embarrassed? What if you're not a student and you invest $50,000 into a new business venture that fails? Would you have those same feelings? Would you feel anxious? What if you're a parent? Could you allow your children to fail over and over again? Well, I want you to fail. I want you to fail. And I want those of you watching and listening to have the most biggest epic failures in your lifetime. Think I'm kidding? Just ask my current managerial communication students. All 40 of them just failed their midterm. I have purposely for the past six years set up this course to have them experience failure. They turn in deliverables, one page papers, and do presentations, all the while receiving zeros on all of them providing them only with negative feedback, focusing on what they've done wrong. Everything that they have learned about academia has been thrown out the window. And for most of them, it's the only time that they have failed at something again and again. It can be so frustrating to them and many times so frightening. This is because we are all afraid of failure. Now you might be asking yourself, why would you ever take me as a professor? Or why would you ever hire me as a client? But what if we lived in a world where none of us were afraid to fail, ever? What if people and businesses could learn to embrace failure and overcome fear of failure? Because this is how we learn. By teaching that failure can result in rebirth, new creation of ideas and solutions, and that the more times we fail, the less scary it becomes, and the end result can be major transformation. Rebirth can be defined as the act of being reborn. To many, it can be transformation, growth, change. This creation, decline, and rebirth cycle is continuously in our lives. We can see this cycle of rebirth throughout us and throughout our life. For example, in nature, a blade of grass can grow after a devastating wildfire. In fiction, a single phoenix lives for 500 years before it self-destructs by setting itself on fire, only to emerge as a younger bird. In symbols, the triskeel, depicted as a wheel with three waves in the center, having no beginning and no end. A lotus seed, struggling to grow from the darkness and the depth of the mud before finally breaking the water's surface to blossom into a flower and starting the process again. The scarab beetle, who the ancient Egyptians associated with the sun, scurrying across the sky, and when the sun set, the beetle died only to rise again when the sun rose in the morning. We see this in businesses. Take Airbnb, for example. Angel and Silicon Valley investors were super confused about what Airbnb was. They didn't understand the concept and therefore would not invest. So the founders were struggling to try to pay their rent. And they had to resort to designing cereal boxes to help make ends meet. Today, that company is valued at $103 billion. In religion, Hinduism and Buddhism, 
It is called samsara. This is the classic karmic rebirth, death, and rebirth cycle. In Catholicism, we hear the story of Jesus dying on the cross, only to have a rise again three days later, and we celebrate Christmas. Wait, did I just say Christmas? I meant Easter. <laughs> I have failed so many times before in my life, and it has made me a better person, a more creative thinker. It's given me the ability to laugh at failure and carry on in life, especially carrying on with this TEDx talk, not once, but now twice. I want to share three stories with you that have really allowed me and others to help overcome a fear of failure or death. The first story wasn't my fault. I was a product of my circumstances. And yet because of this, I was so fearful of financial failure that I carried it with me most of my life. When I was younger, I grew up in an upper middle-class family with three younger brothers, two parents and a grandmother. I enjoyed the basic necessities in life, and I felt safe and secure until one day I didn't. My grandmother passed away. We lost the house that we lived in. Soon thereafter, my father lost his job. I ended up moving to rural northern Wisconsin to a three-room cabin, not bedroom, three-room with no running water in the 1980s. And because of that, I would forever consider this my rock bottom for years to come. I became a perfectionist, a worry wart, an overachiever, anxious all the time, never wanting to experience financial despair again. But it limited me always trying to be successful. I became unhappy from not picking the right major to almost flunking out of college, to working at jobs that I hated only for the money, to having gone through a terrible divorce. I realized that I could not be successful 100% of the time. Only then did I decide to stop fighting failure and only from recognizing and riding these continuous waves of failure, are we able to see how powerful the lessons of failure are. Many times in hindsight, these failures turn out to be the greatest opportunity for growth. The reason it took me almost 40 years to overcome my fear of failure was that according to a Harvard medical school study, the emotion of dread takes only one tenth of a second to take root in our body and yet it can live there a lifetime. I want to share with you another definition of rebirth. The act of reappearing or starting to flourish after a decline, a revitalization or revival, just like the phoenix. We can apply this definition of rebirth to businesses after the pandemic. During COVID, the international business playing field was leveled and equalized. Many businesses shut down and thousands of people lost their jobs. Some bemoan the fact that business has been awful and that our economy will never recover. But there are others who seize the opportunity to pivot. They've streamlined their operations, welcomed new technologies, and embraced remote working and learning from home and they've prospered. This is the time 
to emerge, experience decline, and re-flourish to transform ideas, people, and businesses into something that has great possibilities. In 2020, during COVID, I took the leap of faith to start five businesses, which means five possible failures. Three did fail, but the lesson here is that without even trying, two of them wouldn't be alive today. One of these new businesses focused on helping clients increase revenue and in a roundabout way, helping them embrace failure. One client's business of 33 years was declining because of COVID. So in an effort to save it and get more customers in the door, she instinctively, out of fear, decreased her pricing. She was adamant about doing so. And all I could do is sit back and watch, even though I had a feeling that it wouldn't work. It didn't. And within one month, she was failing at even a more alarming rate. Based on my knowledge of failure, I suggested that she raise her prices dramatically because after all, what did she have to lose? Her fear of failure, but she was failing. The increased prices piqued people's interest and helped establish her as having a luxury brand. Lo and behold, after the first quarter of COVID, she saw an increase of 72% in revenue over the previous year. She learned some big lessons, including how not to be fearful, to challenge herself, to move this discomfort out of the body, and to change her thought patterns about failure. Two years later, she is still seeing increased revenue. The last story I wanna share with you is about a figurative death and being reborn. Over the past two years, I have had the privilege and the honor to study with shamans from Colombia and sit in on their ayahuasca and yahe ceremonies. The Taitas believe that drinking this ceremonial tea will allow us to let go of our physical body experience a figurative death, and live temporarily in our astral spirit. Now these figurative deaths are quite common in these ceremonies. And most participants, if not all, have a deep rooted fear of death and dying. So they experience apprehension, chaos, panic, fighting, this inevitable death in the ceremony. For me, knowing that fear lives in our mind and in our body and not in our heart or our spirit, knowing we learn to be fearful from some place allowed me to have a more positive experience. To welcome this death and get into heart I saw myself being buried. I acknowledged that fact, I accepted it, and I allowed it to just happen. Stillness, not struggle. And then being reborn and feeling the peace, the order, the warmth, and the courageousness in that moment. It is my hope that these three stories have showed you that some solutions to failure are all about learning to reframe what failure means to you, getting comfortable with fear, and having the willingness to take chances. For some of you, it might be as simple as not going back to that corporate job, but starting that business you've always dreamed of doing. For parents, it might be allowing your child to fail over and over again 
at one thing without stepping in to help them. For students, it might mean failing that class, which by the way, in the end, never happens to any of my students. They not only end up thriving and surviving, but coming out of it better than they were before, just like my client did. Whatever it is, only you can make the decision to rise from the ashes. I'm Dr. Roberta Pellant, and as a professor, a consultant, and a parent, I want each of you to go out and fail at one thing today. If you do, your future will never look brighter. Thank you.